Hi, I'm Matt Smith, and this is Spark Spread. Today, I'm very pleased to be sharing my Tesla discounted cash flow valuation. This is a sum of the parts valuation, which means that I have valued each of Tesla's business lines separately, and then we add those different pieces together to come up with the total value of Tesla. In going through this exercise, I have come up with a valuation of Tesla today of $2,900 per share. This obviously represents a large amount of upside, but there are several assumptions in here which are critically important, especially the fact that it assumes robo-taxis will become an economic reality in the not too distant future. This model has taken me a long time to put together, and in fact, over the last six months or so, I have torn it down and rebuilt it several times over. This model makes assumptions about what Tesla will look like as a business in the year 2030. Obviously, there is a very high degree of uncertainty about those assumptions, and so there is a high chance that these will be wrong. The only question is by how much they will be wrong. For this reason, please don't take this model or this video or any of the subsequent videos as investment advice. I rather view this as an exercise in valuation, something that I'm interested in and enjoy doing. So all that being said, these numbers need to be taken with a grain of salt. But I think it is valuable to be able to take a look at what you think the future might look like, and then you can stress test those as actual results come in. As we get further details, for example, of how Tesla's FSD beta program rolls out, we'll have a greater understanding of how soon robotaxis may or may not be viable. We can then make adjustments to our assumptions to either track the value up or down based on Tesla's progress on this important feature. Many of the other assumptions, especially on the energy side, will follow a similar pattern to adjust our assumptions up or down. This video is going to be an overview of the model outputs as well as some of the core assumptions, and future videos will go into the individual valuations of each business line. So without further ado, let's get into it. So here you can see the summary of the valuation by business line. Let's take a minute to walk through what each one of these business lines represents. Starting with pure automotive sales, I've come up with a value per share of $328. This represents only the margin and cash flow that Tesla will receive from generating sales of hardware, meaning the physical vehicles that Tesla produces and delivers, as well as a small amount of regulatory credits and some services revenue. Software revenues from full self-driving are valued separately, as you can see in line four. This is a value per share of $1,000. This represents the value that Tesla receives from selling full self-driving as an upfront purchase, as well as from subscription revenues over time. Needless to say, the take rates and pricing that Tesla will ultimately receive for its full self-driving package are highly dependent on whether or not and when robo-taxis will become a reality. In this case, since I have assumed that robo-taxis will become an economic reality over the course of this model, I have assumed higher prices for full self-driving and higher take rates over time. Robo-taxis are the highest share of the overall valuation, coming up to just over $1,200 per share. This is primarily related to platform fees that Tesla will receive on a dollar per mile basis as the robo-taxi fleet generates profits for Tesla. I've also assumed a small portion of a Tesla-owned fleet, which will generate its own margin. Next, let's get into the energy side. Solar and storage hardware will become an increasingly large portion of the value of the company. Storage sales in particular will be escalating over the course of the next 10 years. I've calculated the present value of this cash flow stream as $269 per share. And finally, energy as a service. This is Tesla's ability to string together and coordinate all of the hardware that will be out there and optimize it for services that are provided to the grid. I've assumed some pretty modest assumptions around the revenue streams for this service and come up with a value per share of just $85. Adding each one of these pieces together, you can see we have a total value per share of Tesla of $2,900 today. As I've said at the beginning, we'll be going over each one of these assumptions in more detail in subsequent videos, but I want to leave you in this video with an idea of how the valuation methodology worked overall. With that in mind, let's walk through the pure automotive sales discounted cash flow methodology so that you can have a better understanding of the way the cash flows are calculated. I start each one of the valuations of Tesla's business lines with a buildup of revenue. In this case, for pure automotive sales, the quantity sold and the price at which the vehicles are sold are the two most important drivers of revenue. So I'm building these two up and multiplying them together to come up with the total revenue line. I'm then adding in used vehicle sales, lease revenue, regulatory credits, and services and other revenue to come up with the total revenue line for hardware sales for each quarter in the next decade. I'm then backing out the cost of goods sold and overhead cost forecast to come up with an operating margin excluding depreciation. I'm then backing out overhead costs and capital expenditures to come up with a total cash flow for the company. These cash flows are forecast for each quarter through the year 2030, and then a terminal value is applied using the Gordon Growth methodology. For those of you who are not familiar, the Gordon Growth methodology takes the last year's forecast cash flows, multiplies that by a growth rate, 
and divides that by the difference between the long-term equity discount rate and the long-term growth rate. Each one of these cash flows throughout the forecast period is then discounted back to the present value. There are some corporate overhead impacts as well. Now, if you don't have a background in finance or in valuation, this formula might be a little confusing. So let's take a minute to define some of these terms a little bit better. Starting with the cost of equity. The cost of equity is essentially a discount rate that investors would use to take cash flows from a future period and value them as if they were cash flows today. To come up with a cost of equity for Tesla, I have used the capital asset pricing model. The capital asset pricing model says that the cost of equity for an asset is equal to the risk-free rate plus a beta times a market risk premium. The risk-free rate is generally defined as the yield on the 10-year treasury note. Some of you may have been seeing recently that rising rates on the 10-year treasury have been impacting Tesla's stock price, and you may be wondering why. Well, as the risk-free rate rises, that implies that a higher discount rate for future cash flows must be used when valuing growth stocks like Tesla. The next variable in our capital asset pricing model is beta. Beta is a measure of volatility or risk of an individual security. It measures the degree to which an individual stock moves relative to the overall market. So for example, if the overall market moves by 1% and Tesla has a beta of 1.5, it would imply that Tesla would move by 1.5%. Now beta cuts both ways. So as markets go up, a company with a high beta like Tesla will move up higher. And as markets go down, high beta companies will go down even more than the broader market. A beta of 1 would imply that the company moves broadly in line with the overall market. Tesla's beta of 1.5 indicates more riskiness than the overall market. In developing a cost of equity, this implies that a higher cost of equity must be used. We apply this beta to the risk premium of the company. In this case, the general market has returned 6.7% in the long term, and the risk-free rate is 1.43%. So the difference between those is multiplied by the beta, and then the risk-free rate is added to that amount to come up with a total cost of equity for Tesla of 9.3%. Now let's talk through a few other assumptions. As discussed previously, the long-term growth rate is used in the Gordon growth model for coming up with the terminal value of a company. The effective tax rate indicates the rate at which the company's profits are taxed. These will vary by country and by state. And finally, there's an assumption about robo-taxis. Because robo-taxis are such a large driver of value, it is important to figure out what amount they will be capped at as a percentage of overall vehicle sales. As I said at the outset of this video, I want to have room for both the upside and the downside with this price target, so I've capped robo-taxis at 40% of the overall fleet. This number is essentially saying that by the year 2030, when there may be tens of millions of Teslas on the road, only 40% of them will be employed as robo-taxis. If the economics of robo-taxis are as attractive as I think they might be, then it's very possible that this number could be much higher. And if we were to increase this number to say 80%, then it would have a drastic impact on the calculated value of Tesla. Next, let's look at capital expenditures and depreciation. I've built up the capital expenditure forecast for each one of the business lines separately, and then aggregated these into each period. I have assumed in this model that 50% of future capital expenditures will be funded by debt issuances. This implies that the net debt being held by Tesla will grow over time as Tesla's ambitious capital expenditure plan unfolds. I'm then using this amount to calculate interest expense as well as depreciation in each period. Finally, let's look at the corporate overhead and tax impacts. As I said at the beginning of the video, I've tried to value each one of these business lines separately. However, in its financial statements, Tesla does not allocate overhead items such as research and development or stock-based compensation or even corporate impacts like taxes or interest expense to individual business lines as I'm trying to do here. For this reason, I've developed an overall company-wide forecast for overhead costs, and I'm backing out interest expense and corporate taxes separately. One important point to note is that Tesla has a net operating loss carry-forward balance, which allows it to offset future taxes owed to the government. Because Tesla has lost so much money over the course of its business, it has a current net operating loss carry-forward balance of about $16 billion. This means that the company won't be paying cash for taxes until around the year 2024, by my forecast. I'm modeling corporate cash flow impacts like this separately, and then consolidating them into one company-wide summary at the end of the model. With this consolidated summary, I'm calculating total revenues for the company by building up each line separately. I'm then subtracting out the cost of goods sold to get to a gross margin, and backing out operating expenses to calculate a company-wide EBITDA. From here, I'm adding back stock-based compensation, which is a non-cash expense, 
and backing out cash-based expenses such as CapEx, cash paid for taxes, debt service, and change in working capital. All of this is used to calculate a free cash flow to equity holders of the company. In doing this, over the 10-year period and including a terminal value for the company, I calculate a present value of Tesla's equity today to be worth $3.3 trillion, or $2,900 per share. If that sounds a little bit high to you based on today's valuation metrics, I would agree with you. But that's why I think it's very important to have a long-term look of the company. When I do that and apply reasonable multiples to my projections of Tesla's earnings per share and EBITDA in the years 2025 and 2030, I'm coming up with a range of values of $2,488 to $3,947. This to me indicates that the calculated value of $2,900 is reasonable based on the projections I've included here. Of course, the devil is in the details and it really comes down to Tesla's ability to execute on the projections I've outlined here. We'll save that conversation for future videos. But I want to take a quick detour here to talk about Tesla's working capital because it does have a rather large cash flow impact. Many within the Tesla Cube community have criticized Tesla because it maintains a negative working capital balance. And that can sound like a bad thing if you're not familiar with the details of working capital. But let's take a minute to actually think about what a negative working capital balance means in practice. I'm assuming that Tesla has $2.2 billion of accounts receivable outstanding at the end of Q1, as well as $4.5 billion of inventory and $1.6 billion of prepaid expenses. These three items are Tesla's current assets, and in combination, they're worth $8.3 billion. Now, I'm also projecting $6.6 .6 billion of accounts payable, which is a liability, as well as a further $4.3 billion of accrued liabilities. Subtracting the current liabilities from the current assets gets to a negative working capital balance of $2.6 billion. Now, we can convert these figures into days of receivable, inventory, prepaid expenses, accounts payable, and accrued liabilities. When we do that, then we can take these same sets of days and apply them forward into future periods such that they grow in accordance with the growth of revenues and expenses. When going through this exercise, you can see that Tesla's negative working capital balance grows over time. While this may seem like a bad thing on the surface, in practice, it acts as a source of cash flow for Tesla, since they are being paid by their customers more quickly than they have to pay their suppliers. Traditionally, companies carry a large amount of inventory and so growing rapidly can become a major strain on cash flows. But in Tesla's case, the opposite is true. Growth in their top line actually results in a cash flow boon to Tesla. Now this is not a huge value driver, but it's one that I think is often overlooked when looking at valuations of Tesla. And since I am a finance nerd, I did wanna be sure to include it here to make sure that we're doing everything academically correct. So we will be going into the detailed assumptions around each one of these business lines in future videos. So stay tuned for those. I have also built this model to enable some sensitivity analyses. In future videos, we will also be looking at the share price impact of changing assumptions such as deliveries, robo taxi penetration, diff different pricing schemes and that sort of thing. So I wanna leave you all with the impression and with the understanding that not that $2,900 is the be all end all price for Tesla today, and that we should just hold until the stock price gets that high. But rather, I want to show, show the importance of some of the more impactful drivers of value. So we'll be looking at important drivers of value, such as the overall deliveries, FSD pricing, robo-taxi pricing, uh, as well as the penetration of uh, FSD take rate and robo-taxis as a percentage of the overall fleet. Uh, future videos, we will run some sensitivities around those assumptions, and so you can see for yourself how big of an impact uh, different assumptions will like that will have on the ultimate share price of Tesla. As I've said at the beginning of the video, I do believe there's room both on the downside and on the upside of this case. Thank you so much for watching. Please do be on the lookout for those future videos. I want to say a huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters, as well as to our newest megawatt producer, Ahmad Kamar. Thank you all so much for your support, and thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Spark Spread.